Hey everybody, I'm back here again with you from my hotel room uh, here in Panama City, Panama, and we're going to be talking a little bit about the idea of active inquiry today, and really the bulk of, of Shine Chapter 3, and then uh, gets into it a little bit in, the, in our block text. But uh, we're going to be kind of looking at what does it mean to really listen to somebody? I mean, think about it for a second. When is the last time that you, you really just listened for a little bit? I know that if I did that, perhaps the relationship with my wife and my my friends and my neighbors would be a little bit better I, I, if I wasn't jumping to conclusions about what they needed or what they were saying or if I was thinking about kind of what the next thing I was going to say back to them in response to well, the story that they were telling me. And, you know, our mind can really capture a lot of information and, and it also can process a lot of information simultaneously, but we have to be really careful with that because in consult consulting relationships, there are a lot of psychodynamics that are actually at work. A lot of a lot of psychodynamic theory, a lot of psychoanalytic theory that kind of underpins the idea of process consultation. So if you've not had a chance yet, you definitely want to dig into chapter three, uh, where we talk a little bit about active inquiry. I have a couple of things I want to share with you today about that, and then uh, we'll kind of wrap up um, this podcast. So to uh, to get started, what I want to do is is kind of use this imagery of the visual that we have here of the person climbing this mountain. The The idea is of how we approach a task or a problem really can affect its outcome. Now think about it. How, what would you do if you were going to go mountain climbing? I'm not an experienced mountain climber, and certainly I wouldn't just wake up one morning and say, hey, I think I want to go climb some mountains. I don't have any tools. I don't have any, uh, I don't have any gear. I'm, I'm not even sure like how to do that, right? But let's just say I wanted to just go out and do it and just try it out. Well, that, that would be really silly for me to do, and nobody would really advise for me to do that. I mean, think about, look at this picture right here. This person has tons of, it looks like, professional gear. They're uh, anchored into the mountain. They have support mechanisms. Uh, they're probably not climbing by themselves. They're probably a team of, ahead of them or people below them. Um, certainly, they're, we can see that they're getting up there in altitude, and so preparation it really is important and think about each step that this person makes each step on the side of this mountain is not only intentional but it's planned right so how you approach if we turn the corner from the analogy of mountain climbing and being prepared for that how we approach the climb or our client really determines our base we need to be prepared we shouldn't just walk into consulting relationships and expect to do it really well, right? Maybe we're not prepared. We don't have the right gear. We're not sure about the techniques. We've not, we've not really understood the process consultation model. We must be prepared. One of the things that you might consider doing is using something called active inquiry. Now, active inquiry can help build a client's status and confidence. I remember in a consult consulting relationship, inherently, there's some, sometimes a one-up or a one-down. We need to kind of build back in that sense of status and confidence. And active inquiry always involves the client in the process of diagnosing and action planning. Remember from our last podcast that we mentioned that the client owns the solution, right? And so active inquiry helps us kind of do that. It helps us gather as much information as possible about the situation, context, and people. And that's the valid data that we're trying to get at. What is going on? What's the situation? What's the context? And who's involved with this? It creates a situation for the client that is, most importantly, and don't miss this, safe. It's safe for them to reveal anxiety, provoking information and feelings. It is safe for them to just kind of share with you what's going on. Right. And so how do we really kind of dive into that? Well, the first step is the idea of pure inquiry. And I'm really drawing here from Shine Chapter 3. So if you want to take a look at that as we go through this, um, it may be a good idea or at least have the book handy. So Shine talks about pure inquiry as the client controlling the content and process of the conversation. Well, how does that actually happen? Well, the consultant prompts and listens. We presuppose nothing. Uh, Shine actually says pure inquiry starts with silence. And I love that. I love that because silence is it is powerful and it is deep. And if you allow it to be, silence is loud. It is loud in action. So think about what happens when we say, so, so tell me what's going on. And we just pause. Now, perhaps you, you wanted to tell me something about what was going on. So I say, I ask you, tell me what's going on. You, you want to say something there, right? Think about how we ask that question and we pause. We allow that silence to live and to have life. Or we say, how, how can I help? 
Can you give me some examples of something? Can you give me fee the details of what went on, right? Shine says one, one of the other examples, he says, uh, just say so and let it linger. Let that pregnant pause really develop, right? Pure inquiry is about listening. The consultant prompts and listens and presupposes nothing. All we do is hear. It is inquiry in its absolute purest form. The second is, uh, or the second kind of phase is exploratory diagnostic inquiry. Now here, the consultant manages the process of how co content is analyzed and elaborated on, but does not insert ideas, suggestions, advice, or opinions. Uh, now Shine talks about some specific examples for this, but for the for the purpose of our podcast here, it explores emotional responses such as, well, what was your reaction to that? So somebody's telling us a story. We're in pure inquiry. We're listening. And then we shift, right? The, and the timing here is very important. But we shift and we say, wow, what was your reaction to that? We ask somebody to think differently, not only about the story, but about their reaction. Now, notice that this question here is agnostic to the content of the story. It presupposes nothing still. But it is asking about a reaction. So it doesn't say, wow, that sounds like it was terrible. Okay, what was your reaction to that? doesn't presuppose or judge anything. It just asks for a different frame of reference. Maybe a second way is to explore past, present, and future. Well, what did you do about that? What did you do, what did you do about that after it happened? Again, presupposing nothing, agnostic to the conversation and the story, but asking the client to think a little differently about what's going on. Third, it explores reasons for actions and events. Well, why do you think that happened? Again, ag agnostic question, right? Uh, presupposing nothing, but shifting the frame of reference. And it asking us, asking the client to say more about their own internal dialogue with what was going on. It is an exploratory diagnostic tool. So we're inquiring in an exploratory fashion. Wow, well, what was your reaction to that? Or how did you do that? Or what did you think happened, right? So we use pure inquiry as a means to understand what's going on, and we presuppose nothing. We use exploratory diagnostic inquiry to kind of help us understand how content is analyzed and how it is actually revealed in person in that moment of experience. The third is uh, confrontive inquiry. This is a more, uh, I, I would say it's a challenging um, tool to use because confrontive inquiry can be um, sticky. You know, think about uh, what this might mean. So here the consultant shares their own ideas and reactions about a process. Um, by sharing ideas, the, the uh, consultant forces the client to think about the situation from a new perspective. So now we are supposing some things onto the situation. We are inserting our own self into that and asking questions like, well, could you have done something different? Could you have done the following? Have you considered the possibility that you overreacted? Have you considered your role in the events that took place? We're asking someone to confront the reality and to think very differently and presupposing our own beliefs and perhaps our own perspectives about what's going on. Now, we're not shifting and shaping the story, but we are asking them to think very differently about what's going on. So, in sum, Shine really talks about these three areas, pure inquiry, uh, exploratory, uh, diagnostic inquiry, and then confrontive inquiry. So clearly the book is rich uh, in terms of these kinds of techniques, and there is much more in here that you're going to want to take a look at. But just as a high-level overview, I wanted to at least introduce this concept to you. So I hope that over the course of the next week, I would challenge you, right? Not just hope, but I would challenge you. To use these tools in your own conversations with people, pick a pick a relationship and and really use pure inquiry. Really, kind of tell me more about that. What's going on? Or so, you know, listen a story from somebody and listen to them, and then use some kind of diagnostic inquiry. Right? Well, how did you react to that? Or what was going on? Right? And then perhaps if time dwell and with a little bit of interpersonal skill and some savviness about how you might ask this question, you might ask somebody, well, what do you think your role it was with that? Right? Could you, do you think you might have done something different? Could you have overreacted? Right? These questions can be a little testy, but when dropped and applied at the, at the right time, could be really helpful to a relationship. More than anything, I hope this information is helpful for you as you consider your own consultation projects and how you work with other people. I, I think the shine and the block text really, every time I teach this class, really help me kind of understand 
but what's going on in my world, right? What are the dynamics that are at play, and what are the principles that, that really kind of guide how I interact with other people? It's always a pleasure to hang out with you and spend some time with you. I appreciate uh, you taking some time to, to check out the podcast today. Take a look at the text. These two books are outstanding books. I look forward to being back in the States soon. Hope you have a great day. Until next time.